Today I'd like to show you how to lay out a squared round on metal based on this shop ticket. A 10 by 8 to 7 inch round 8 inches tall. In order to lay out this squared around from a plan view, the bottom and top must be parallel to one another. Start with a 10 by 8 rectangle and then locate the center and scribe your 7 inch circle. Here I'm drawing the full plan view. We could do only a half plan or a quarter plan to save time. But first, let's get good and then we'll do the shortcuts later. Once this is done, divide the circle into 12 equal spaces. Using your radius, keep walking that radius across the circle. You have now divided it into 12 equal spaces. And it's always good practice to number and letter your corners. Now I'm going to begin drawing a true length triangle used in triangulation. I am now marking the working height or the working length of this fitting. And earlier we said it was going to be eight inches, but I'm making this seven and a half because I am allowing for S and drive connectors on the 10 by eight opening. Now with your dividers, Take all of the element lines and transfer them to the base of your true length triangle. That was a one, a two, do the same thing. A three, Now make sure you keep marking like I just did A4. Because this is a rectangle to round on center, all of these element lines are pretty much the same. B12 is identical to A2. B11 will be identical to B A3. And B10, identical to A4. Here I'm just going to sketch the element lines to possibly make it easier for you to understand what the pattern will look like in a few minutes. This is not necessary. Here, I have decided to put the seam because I am making this in two pieces. This is my seam location, and I'll call that X. Now, let's begin the half pattern for this squared around. I will be drawing a line and marking A to B, which is going to be 10 inches in distance. Then you're going to set your dividers, which was one. We're trying to locate number one. Set your dividers on the true length triangle from A1 
to seven and a half inches tall. And with your divider, strike that arc up and be, be one. That is number one. Now we're gonna try and find number two and number 12. Well, you will need another set of dividers set to 1 12th of a seven inch circumference. And this is one way of doing it. So once you've found 1 12th, scratch on either side of the one. Now we will try to find B12. Set your dividers to B12. And A2. And don't forget to number the top. Now we will keep doing the same for 3 and 11 and 4 and 10. This is again, 1 12th of the circumference. Strike an arc towards 10 and towards four. With your divider set from A to four or B10, strike your arc A towards four and B towards 10. Now that A4 is done and B10 is done, we need to find the length of the seam. But first, from A to X is halfway from A to D. And A to D is eight inches, therefore AX is four inches. Set your dividers to four inches and strike your arc on B with the same arc, four inches. Now we need to triangulate the seam. This length will be added to your true length triangle and then triangulated over seven and a half inches tall. Now use four as a center and strike your arc downward to find X. Same thing, 10 downward to find X. These are the same element lines that I drew in your plan view. Again, unnecessary to do, but it just helps me show you where the triangles are. So that triangle is the same there, and those three lines are going on my right side, and from one to four, I'm just going to finish scribing my half pattern. If it was done right, this should equal 90 degrees. Now let's go ahead and allow for our connectors and seams. 
On this side, I have a half inch lap spotted seam. And on the rectangular opening, I am allowing for S and drives, which is half and one inch. Connect your numbers on the top to create the arc. Now it's always good practice before cutting your pattern to check the arc length on top. And in this case, we have a seven inch diameter, which is 22 inches in circumference. Therefore, I cut a 11 inch long piece and used it as a peewee tape. Now go ahead and cut out your pattern. Once you've sheeted off in the break, finish all the notching required on both patterns. Now that the patterns are done, we are ready to start forming. I have chosen the break to do the bends on the squared around. Some people will use uh, stakes or even rollers. Um, anyways, there is about seven bends that I have planned here. And I'm, my goal is to turn this 90 degrees. So every bend should be approximately 12 to 15 degree bend. If you have been bending properly, when you pull it out of the brake, you should end up with a 90 degree corner. And you will notice that I'm doing both patterns at once. finish up the other quarter and I'm now ready to go and spot weld the half inch lap seam. Now that both patterns are spot welded together, we need to add a collar on the top. It is seven inches, and we are going to add a half inch lap seam on one end and a beaded half inch lap seam on the bottom. Therefore, I cut the piece 22 and a half by two and a half. Go to the roller, roll it, spot weld it, and bead it. and try it on the top. And here I noticed that it doesn't automatically fit in. A little bit of prep is required to make this collar fit inside the squared around. And I have chosen to go to the rotary machine. And you can see the metal 
circle expanding a bit, just enough to get the collar in. Now she's ready for spot welding.